I got no reason to fear. I got Jesus on my. I got that. 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 I got no reason to fear. I got Jesus on my. I got that. Hey guys! Hello, 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 hello. Welcome back to Butterfly Ambassadors Money Motivations. It is already March, you guys. It's March 5th. Like, God is so amazing. So, I pray your weekend was amazing. I pray you went to church and heard a great word. But I just thank the Lord for just how awesome he truly is. So if you've seen the title or you've seen like a little clip insert of what this message is going to be about, praise the Lord. We're going to be talking about today, humble place. Humble place. And as you see from the picture, God has a message for all of us, even myself, on today. So if you are new to Welcome Ambassadors, new to this YouTube channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. Go ahead and just like, this, like the link below. It should be a subscribe red box. And there's also a gray bell. Click both of those so you always stay in tune with all upcoming videos. So God is so faithful, guys. If you are new to the video, welcome. Butterfly Ambassador Ministry simply means we are beautifully anointed in his image to spread the gospel to all nations. So that's what this shirt says. If you're wondering, make sure you order your t-shirts. You know, the websites, everything is linked below. So please don't hesitate, you guys. If you need prayer, if you need any um, wisdom, any help with the scriptures, please don't hesitate. We're all a family here in God's kingdom. So go ahead and just write below so that way I can help you guys and we all can stay true to God's principles and knowing the Lord in his context, not our own. So, All right, so the way this works, we pray in. God just gives a message. The Holy Spirit leads my tongue. And then we pray out. And then we just see each other again next Monday. So without further ado, let's pray in. Thank you, God, for today. God, we just thank you, Lord, for this humble place. We thank God for just learning who you are and the place that we are currently in. We pray that we just lean onto you and we're not going to be hold to our own understanding. We're going to lean onto your word, God, on today. We thank you for strengthening, strengthening us in this time. We thank you, God, for just, just being an encourager, being our comfort, help. We just thank you, God, for being a provider, God. We thank you, Lord, for just helping us in each and every single way that we need you, Lord. So we just thank you, God, for just this message. We pray that it blesses people today tomorrow and future times when they watch this we pray that they know that the word still stands so we just pray right now god that you replace jaleesa's words with your words god that she's led by the holy spirit god so we just pray right now that all viewers watching hear you and replace me with you in the name of jesus god we just pray that they see signs and wonders we pray they open their hearts on to hear your word on today and they open their ear gates to hear what you have for them to hear and this humble place we thank you for it god we're grateful to the Lord for you just strengthening us in each and every way in this faith walk. So just thank you, God, and we claim it done in the name of Jesus that we will understand the the word on today. We understand the, the, the scripture verses on as well, Lord. We just thank you for the repetition to knowing who you are and relate in relation to our walks with you. In Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen. Alright, guys, so let's go ahead and get right down to it. So the title, you guys can see, Humble Place humble place so if you see the picture previous there's a janitor and i think it's so amazing how the lord gave me the picture of a janitor and i think it's so amazing how not only i'm pretty sure she mobbed and swept but she is bending down and she is scrubbing the floor so that takes humility to clean any type of surface you know, that takes humility, especially if you've been to a job where you're a janitor or maybe you're just a receptionist or a cashier and you just happen to be, you know, a part of the cleaning crew. Like, that's part of your duties. So, like, cleaning the toilets, you know, sweeping up, you know, a, a desk or, um, you know, just cleaning any part of that office, you know, that is a part of your duty. I know for me... Uh, I love to clean, <laughs> but there's certain times when it's other, you know, people's, uh, I guess you say filth or dirt, whatever. It can be a little tough, you know. Uh, has anyone out there ever been cleaning, you know, something and it's trash just thrown on you? 
I've been there. Um, have you ever, you know, uh, babysat for someone? I've been a preschool teacher before, so you know those diapers that don't smell the best? <laughs> have you ever had a explosion episode happen or you have to clean all of it up? Your hand, you're clean, you have a glove on, but you still gotta clean off your hand, um, clean the baby and clean the surface that you place the baby on. You know, so there's there's places where it doesn't look the best, doesn't smell the best, right? Uh, doesn't feel the best, right? But God has positioned you to be there. He's specifically aligned you to be at that place where it doesn't look pretty. You know, it's not glitz and glam. It's not, you know, um, I'm special. It's more like, Lord, you've called me to clean up some poop. You know, it could be, you know, um, cleaning someone else's, you know, dirty tray. Maybe you've been a server at a restaurant like McDonald's or somewhere like that before a server at a restaurant and you've had to clean dirty cups, you know, maybe a child has left, <laughs> children, love, children love to do this, they just like to smear a whole bunch of sauce all over the high chair, they just like to smear stuff, right, you had to clean off, you know, that for the next guest. So God wants us to focus on that humble place where it seems like it is the end all be all, it seems so rough seems tough it seems frustrating it seems like god what about me like this person has a promotion this person has a new car this person just got married this person has you know xyz this celebrity over here is talking about they got this amount of money but i'm over here cleaning someone's poop so let's talk about that humble place on today so let's go ahead and go to job let's go to job and if you guys don't know the story about job no, it, it's not Job. I know some people may think in the Bible this is Job, but no, it's actually Job. So um, when you go to the book of Job, I'm I'm pretty sure you're going to feel more gratitude towards your life, your predicament, once you read the whole story of Job. So I'm going to go just with chapter 2. The Lord wants me to go to chapter 2, verse 10. Now the background of this, if you don't know about Job, so Job is an upright man. That means he's like, um, not identical to Jesus, but he's, you know, pretty much faithful. Like he's just, um, he doesn't sin. Like he basically does, he does everything in his, you know, might through the strength of the Jesus though, to do the righteous ways to show God glory, to give God praise. So he's like almost there to Jesus. Okay. <laughs> so Job is, you know, wealthy, okay? Like, he's a, he's a wealthy guy. I guess in today's world, we look at Job as like a Bill Gates, okay? So, yeah. So, Job is tempted by the enemy. You know, the enemy, he doesn't like people that are in the right name of the Lord. You know, he always tries to, you know, attack the people that are doing right by the Lord, trying to stay on the right setting with the Lord. So the enemy wants to tempt Job to see if Job will curse God. That's the background, okay? Now, Job is tempted by the enemy because the Lord allowed it, okay? And the enemy, he done took Job's cattle. Done, he done killed all of Job's children, yeah. Took most of his possessions and gave him boils. Now, I don't know if anyone has ever had a boil. They're painful. I've had a boil before. They're not the best. So if you ever had a boil, it looks like a big old pimple, like a zit, and it hurts. There's a lot of, you know, residue, you know, and blood and all. And it's very, very irritating, and you can't do nothing. You have to let it just kind of pop on its own. So that's what a boil is. Now, the enemy has tempted Job with a whole bunch of boils over his body. Right. So before I read the verse, Job is, mm, he's not, like, frustrated, but he's more like, Lord, what's going on here? Like, hmm. well, he's, he's, like, kind of. He's not um, upset, but he's more like, hmm, well, what's going on here, you know? So, his wife, okay, she tells her husband, Job, to curse God and die. Craziness, right? This is how Job responds. This is verse, chapter 2, verse 10. Now, this reads, but he said unto her, this is Job, not Jesus, but this is Job saying, but he said unto her, thou speakest as one of those foolish women speaketh. <laughs> Job says, what? Job says, shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? 
And all this did not Job sin with his lips. So that means he did not sin. Now, let me, let me read to you NLT. I got you. Don't worry. I'm simple over here. I understand. So NLT reads, shall we accept good from God and not trouble? Let me read that. Let me read that to you again. It says, shall we accept good from God and not trouble? One more time. Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? I want you guys to think about where you're at right now in the season you're in right now. What you're trusting God for. What Where's your faith level at? Are you in the right setting with God? Have you asked him that lately? Like, I want you guys to think about where you're at in the faith walk. Because sometimes God allows the enemy to do certain things in our lives to strengthen our faith in him. To, to alter our course so that way we're not dependent on man dependent on our riches our bank accounts our husbands god wants us to make sure that we're dependent on the lord that we're really calling out to him that we really do love god that we're not going to just curse him if if you know stuff goes wrong in our lives but we're down in the dumps you know are you going to still praise the lord still worship god still pray unto him even when it's hard will you Let's go ahead and go to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 through 4. It says, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. He comforts us in all of our troubles so that we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. Ha! Ha! We just read in verse Job 2.10, it says, Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? Ha! See, sometimes God allows the enemy to do certain things in our lives that doesn't seem the best, doesn't feel the best, it's out of our comfort zones. Hello. But look, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 through 4 reads this. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. So that means God gives us comfort when we're in trouble. Even though God sent the enemy to do certain things in our lives that doesn't feel the best, God is still our comfort. He's still merciful. So in other words, God has every single thing in your life predestined. So just follow him. Just trust him. Even me. Like there's times in my life where I'm like, Lord, I need you. People cussing and fussing at my job. You know, this is tough. Like I'm cleaning people's, you know trades or whatnot I'm, I'm helping other people do their jobs I'm, I'm overextending myself overworking you know to help the business run smoothly run you know afloat because I want to work as on to you God and this is hard you know this, this is tough so in times like that where it seems very hard don't forget that God has sent you there for a reason for a season you've been praying to God for that ministry you've been praying to God to you know strengthen your faith muscles strengthen you know um, your your vision to see him clearly well he's he's giving you a place where you can feel his presence in uncomfortability because that's where we stretch our hands to the Lord that's where we, that's when we surrender when it's uncomfortable when it's out of um our ways of dealing with it we can't we gotta depend on god we can't do things by ourselves that's why he wants us to be in the humble place so that we're not leaning on to everyone else we're not looking to our husbands to do everything or our pastors to do everything they're awesome but don't lean on your pastors to always help you everything sometimes you have to look at the sermon that the pastor's giving you but go to god though confirm everything with the lord pastors are amazing pastors are so you know resourceful when it comes to understanding who you are in christ you know they help you with the scriptures to help make sure you're understanding you're in the right standing with the lord however there is a time where we need to get off the baby milk and get the meat of the word of god for yourselves because you have to understand who you are in christ for yourself you can't be baby all the time you know what i mean so god wants to strengthen your faith walk by sending you to that humble place where it's out of your comfort zone. Let's keep going. Now write this down if you can. Growth brings challenges. Growth brings challenges. So let me read further what God gave me. In part, because it increases interactions across traditional barriers. See, we're too complacent. God wants us out of the comfort of ourselves. He wants to develop us to be like Christ. If we say we want to be like Jesus, we have to get out of our comfort zones. 
So God wants to strengthen our humility where it's a janitor. Maybe you are a single mom. Maybe you don't have a job yet. That's okay. God wants to strengthen you so that you can serve in the place where you're currently in. Maybe you are an intern and that internship is a hot mess. Maybe it's just really tough for you right now. You are trying to get to this deadline and it is so hard. People are like discouraging you. No one's in your corner. You feel like it's just you by yourself. The professor is yelling at you every five seconds and you're trying to get things done and it seems like you're not meeting your quota at the time you want to. No fear. You cannot be complacent. You cannot doubt God. Don't worry to God. We pray to the Lord. Think about David. I remember David uh, 1 Samuel 30, 60, David had to encourage himself in the Lord. There was no one in his corner. Like, David had to encourage himself with scriptures. Do you do that? When you're going through that rough time when it's, like, so hard at your job or your internship or your marriage, maybe you're just going through a season right now where you like, Jesus, all right, you better fix him, you know. Or maybe the husband, you better fix her, you know. Maybe at that season where it's tough. Maybe it's just not a lot of intimacy. Maybe it's a lot more argument, but it's not a lot of intimacy. Maybe just step back and see what you're doing wrong. There's nothing wrong with stepping into a corner and a secret place that you may have. Maybe it's your car, maybe it's your bathroom, whatever it is. And seeing what area is the problem. It could be you. It just could be you. Maybe you nag your husband too much. Maybe you are a control freak. Maybe you just um, want to do everything your way. Maybe you are not listening to what your partner's really saying. You're just hearing what you want to hear, but you're not listening to what he's actually or she's actually saying. Maybe you just fall back and say, God, fix my heart. Make sure my heart is centered on you and make sure I'm praising you. Make sure I'm not idolizing my wife or idolizing my husband. Make sure that I'm in a humble place where I serve my wife or, or husband as onto you. I'm not using this marriage to make this marriage my identity. You got to watch that. You got to make sure that, and if you're single, same scenario. Maybe you're going out every single week to a restaurant or out with friends all the time because you want to feel validated. You want to feel like you're a part of the crowd, a part of the posse or whatever, you know. Maybe just step back and stop being around so many people and just take time to be with the Lord. You have all these demands from other people, but yet, God hasn't had a time with you in over a year. Can you remember off, off the gate how many times you prayed to the Lord? I lost count. I can't count because I, I pray every day. I need Jesus all day, every day. But, like, maybe you just haven't had a chance to really do that. Like, have a long time with God. I don't mean just, you know, five minutes of your day, like, you play a worship song. Okay, I'm, I'm done, Jesus. Like, sometimes we need to just really just fall back. Like, fall back and just let the Holy Spirit lead our tongues. Sometimes we need to just pray what the scripture is saying. Like, whatever you're going through, like, maybe it's you're at a place where you just need income. And you're trying, you know, to wait for the Lord. It's hard. You see all these other people getting promotions and it's just really tough for you. Well, take time as the Lord leads you and just pray over your life. Pray Philippians 4.19, and my God will supply all my needs of course is rich through Christ Jesus. Just, just, just say that over yourself. Sometimes we need to, you know, fall back from social media, okay? That's a distraction. It can be a blessing if you use it the correct way, but sometimes we just think that social media is a perfect world, and that is all a lie. So we need to just really focus at what God wants us to see in our humble place. I mean, are you truly invested your time to the Lord or are you investing your time in people? Let's keep it real. Like, are you a people pleaser? Are you? Do you want people to like you? Do you want to always be liked? Do you want to have the best likes? Think about social media. It's always who's following you. How many likes do you have? How many comments do you have? How many, you know, it's always like, like, likes, likes, likes. It's loved, all this other stuff. Like, what about, do you love Jesus? Like, has he heard you say you like him today? Have you followed Jesus today? Like, Let's focus on what God wants us to see in our daily lives. Like, do you have your daily bread every day? The word is our daily bread. Do you read it every day? Or is it when you feel like it? Is it when someone tells you to? Is it when you see, you know, a, a worship song? Is that the time when you read the word? Which is awesome. But sometimes God wants us to just read his word first. In the morning, do you complain in the morning? Do you complain about the job you haven't even gone to yet? 
Like, God had to help my heart with that. God had to help me and not have discontentment in my season. You know, help me to not look at where I'm at as agony, but look at it as a blessing. It's, it's a starting ground for the ministry that God wants to build within me. Sometimes we miss out on the bigger picture. Like, we see our job as, oh, this is hard, Lord, I need you. But do you understand that there's a lot of people that come through your job every single day those are the people that you could be ministering to as the Lord leads. You don't want to be like a preacher holic, you know what I mean? But as the Lord leads you, those are the people that you could be ministering to. And they don't have to know that you're, you know, preaching to them. It could just be conversation. You know, maybe they're um, always negative. They always say something negative all the time. You can always say, well, you know what? God's got it. You know, he's going you know, to love on you, you know. Like today is the day the Lord has made. And that, that could be it. It don't have to be a long paragraph type conversation. It could be something as simple as that. Like, it could be something as simple as God has it and walk away. You know, it doesn't have to be like a long, drawn out conversation if that's uncomfortable for you. But God's going to stress that. He's, he's going to make it so that way you're in situations where it's hard, where it doesn't seem easy. There's been situations in my job, ooh. It didn't seem, like, I remember I was taking trash out, you guys. It's so amazing. I was taking trash out, and this customer, bless his heart, he just, the spirit just drawed him to turn around and look at me and ask him some questions, and I'm taking trash, and I'm, you know, I'm just doing my job, you know, and the Lord leads me to minister, and the Lord just leads me to say, you know, be who God has called you to be. Be affectionate with your wife. You know, it's okay to do what God has led you to do. You know, no condemnation, and I remember I, bless his heart he kept saying how he didn't feel worthy or deserving of his wife and the holy spirit it was like it was like word you know just word just word came out and i'm still doing trash and still doing my job but the holy spirit took over and i'm at my job you know and and by the grace of god it wasn't you know inappropriate praise the lord but um yeah i was just led by the Holy Spirit to let him know like Jesus died on the cross he took our shame by being naked on the cross so there's no need for you to be ashamed you are deserving of your wife because you repented you repented so friend there's no reason for you to think as though that you don't deserve what God has blessed you with that's like saying to a parent you know that buys you food to eat that's like saying oh psh, I, don't, I don't deserve this food what? <laughs> God provides you with it so that way you can glorify him with what you have. That's what you guys have to think about. We're in a humble place. Are you grateful for it? God has strengthened me to be grateful. Don't think that it's easy by any means, but God has helped me to be to be grateful for what I have my portion. Because I could have missed out on the opportunity. If I was down the dumps and, and complaining and just antsy and just, you know, woe is me or like, oh, I want to go home. Where's five o'clock at? Like, oh, this is annoying. Like, oh, this job's stupid. You know what I'm saying? If I was like that, I would have missed out on my opportunity to minister the way God wanted me to minister. And because I was led by the Holy Spirit to say those things, that customer invested into the company and bought way more than what he was going to buy but moments like that don't miss out on your on your opportunity to bless god to glorify him because now god gets all the praise for what that guy did so let's move forward so re write this down the lord prepares me to praise him even when it's hard the lord prepares me to praise him even when it's hard Praise the Lord. So let's go further. Growth begins, no, I'm sorry. Growth brings challenges in part because it increases interactions across traditional barriers. But as we seek the Holy Spirit's guidance, we will find creative solutions as potential problems turn into opportunities for more growth. Look at this. God will show us his glory in these situations that take us out of our comfort zones. So take every opportunity to serve someone. Take every opportunity to serve someone. Scripture is not just talk, but inspiration from God. Words have life or death consequences. 
So let us never, ever take for granted the powerful gift of language. Impact others with your words. So, Lord, may we honor you, Lord, in all that we do or say. Just say that of yourself in the morning. Lord, may I honor you today in everything I do, everything I say. And if anything that's not of you, Lord, remove it from me right now in the name of Jesus. Let's go to Luke 16.10. Luke 16.10. We're almost done, guys. If you are faithful in little things, you will be faithful in large ones. But if you are dishonest in little things, you won't be honest with greater responsibilities. And if you are untrust, untrustworthy about worldly wealth, who will trust you with the true riches of heaven? And if you are not faithful with other people's things, why should you be trusted with things of your own? Are you grateful for the home and place God has placed you in? Are you obedient to what God's given you? Or are you complaining? Are you complaining all the time? I want you to alter that on today. I want you to hear what God is saying to all of us on today. So I pray that this word has blessed you. I pray that you write it down. I pray that you write this down. This is a really, 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 really amazing card that was given to me from my pastors. Because it just reminds you of what God is doing. So even though that we can't see what God is doing, God has it. Like, know that the humble place that you are in, I know it doesn't feel good, guys. I know it's tough. I know it's hard. But that's how you know God's going to get the glory for your story. So don't give up. Don't give in. Just give it all to God. He has it. I love you guys like crazy. So make sure you guys like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. I love you guys so much. Tune in with me next Monday. And thank the Lord for the humble place that he's placed you in. My name is Lisa Cogdale. I'll see you guys next Monday. I love you guys so much. I know that I'm praying for you. I know that God, God has it. Guys, don't give up. He loves you so much. And he will supply all your needs. Just trust him. All right. Bye, guys. Love you. I got the A C T O R Y. I got no reason to fear. I got Jesus on my. I got that. 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 I got